Okay. Well, oh, this is a really good microphone. It's, it really amplifies my sound. All right? So we're all here to um, practice speaking in English uh, bef before everybody. So basically, it's an English public speaking club. And to speak in English is to learn to speak in an explicit language. Because this language, unlike Mandarin, uh, lays out the logical pattern in various ways. In, in Chinese, in Mandarin, we communicate according to our tacit understanding. You understand this person because you know this person. This person does not have to add tenses, does not have to add modes. The, the, the nouns do not change according to, to cases. Verbs do not change according to tenses and the subjects. You understand the logic because you know this person. But, but English does not work this way. In English, you have to lay out the logical pattern, the lexical messages, with tenses of the verbs, with the moods of the verb, and with the case uh, inflections, if there are inflections. There are not actually many inflections in English anymore, but, many, but rather in other European languages. But here, I would like to first uh, put forward some things that we have to really pay attention to when you, when you use the tenses. Uh, basically, you have done really a good job when you use English. Uh, as an old saying goes, NTU means no, no one, nobody teaches you because everybody is good at anything. But still, I would like to remind you that uh, when you lay out the time frame for your lexical messages, you really have to pay attention what time frame you're referring to. If it's an action that has been done, that is finished, then use the past tense. And when it is an ongoing situation that hasn't ended, then you, it's, it's best that you use the present perfect tense. And if it, if it was something that happened in the past, but it was, if, if it was in progress, you could use the past uh, present tense. And also there's the mood. Mood is actually quite uh, a lot more difficult than tenses for Taiwanese English learners because uh, this is uh, actually further away from our mother tongue, the logical pattern. So when we talk about moods in any given European language, or any language on earth rather, there are actually three. The indicative mood, chen shu yu qi, the subjunctive mood, jia shu yu qi, and the imperative mood, ming de yu qi. But imper imperative is pretty much uh, easy in English, you just have to use the present tense, and that's it. It's not the case for other European languages, so thank goodness we, we, we learn English here. But what, what's most difficult for the Taiwanese people, for Taiwanese English learner, is the subjunctive mood. Because you have to refer to something that is uh, conditional, that may not be true. And you want to add that uh, logical pattern into your, your expression. So for example, if we were Doraemon, you cannot say if we are Doraemon, because that's not going to be true. So that is conditional, that has to be subjunctive. Uh, if I were to leave, I would address the economic problem differently. That's also subjunctive, present subjunctive. There's also the past subjunctive, which I didn't really pick up uh, during this, this event, but it's really uh, the, the way that you speak in past uh, perfect tense. Uh, if, it had, if I had been in other schools, I would have ended up in a different career. That's past subjunctive. So those subjunctive moves are what we have to pay attention to. Also, when you go to a toilet, you see different compartments, right? They are called stalls. So you, you can say, oh, there are people in the in the next stall, in the neighboring stall. And they might hear you taking a dump. Yeah, you, you can use that word. It's pretty a pretty useful word. Another way to express English nouns, I was talking about verb in, uh, previously. When you use nouns to express uh, lexical patterns, you have to use prepositions properly. Uh, because English has evolved from the ancient uh, European eras, when uh, the Roman people spoke in Latin when they, or they, when they laid out all the noun, uh, sort of non noun patterns in case inflections. But in English, in English, we don't have case inflections anymore. So we pretty much, uh, so the inflections are pretty much uh, replaced by by prepositions. So when Asian Roman people use ablative, you pretty much just use on, in, to, uh, those prepositions to to really uh, find to to regulate the role of the noun in a sentence. For example, I'm uh, in Taiwan, I'm in Taipei, I'm in a school on the, what, what's the, what's the, on the 14th of October. So those prepositions are vital and don't get them wrong. I know learning preposi pre uh, preposition is really a challenge for, for any English learner. 
but this is what we really have to get right. And also of the genitive, uh, for the genitive case, that's also pretty important because you can denominate, for example, possession with the verb of. I'm a student of NTU, that means that you're, you belong to NTU, so there's the genitive term. But uh, this, is, this is really in reverse compared to the Mandarin genitive arrangement because in Mandarin, uh, we put um, the, uh, the describing, we put the describing noun in the back and the described genitive noun in the front. But that's in reverse in English. For example, uh, student of NTU, that's in reverse. So you have to really keep in, in mind. For example, uh, if you say, you have to remind yourself that this is in reverse, and you have to lay up 3,000 in the in a, in, in a front, and then 3,000 of the tuition, so that you can express the genitive noun in a more proper way in English. And uh, when you move, for example, factories out to another country, it's called outsourcing, so uh, you can use that word to shorten the length of your speech. And when you say that a company is publicly traded, for example, on the stock, on the stock market, you can say it's a listed company. And also we use definite articles, which is really quite challenging. The, the rule, the general rule is that you usually don't use the definite articles for proper nouns. For example, you don't say the Taiwan, the China, you don't, you, you don't say that, you just say Taiwan or China. And unless, in the proper noun, there's already the word the, for example, the Philippines, the Netherlands. That's uh, an exception. And also you almost seldom use uh, the definite article to uncountable nouns, unless it's like really necessary. That, you are really definitely referring to really specific, uncountable noun. For example, I drink water. If you say I drink the water, it's grammatically correct, but it's it means differently. Okay, and also numbers are really challenging when you speak Mandarin as your native language and you learn English as a foreign language, because in Mandarin the units progress with four uh, four orders of magnitude, while in English we progress with three. So there's thousand, there's million, there's billion. They all, they are all ten to the third power apart. But in, but in Chinese, why? Uh, yeah, uh, they are ten to the fourth power apart. So when you transfer from one language to the other, when you are saying a larger, uh, when you are, you are talking about a larger uh, number, then you really have to pay a lot of attention to how numbers are relayed differently. In different languages, uh, in, in my line of work, it's really challenging because I I work I I, I do simultaneous interpreting, and when there's a, I have a bunch of numbers laying out, I have to translate that instantaneously. So for me, it's 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 a reflection. I have to train myself to reflect on that. But for you, you have to really practice a lot in in referring to different kinds of units, and also always use a microphone, please, please. I I just saw that like, there was there was one guy who tried to avoid using a microphone and they and they still picked up the microphone. And then, then there's the other who just totally dish the microphone and say, oh, I don't want to use the microphone. That's okay in this little room, but let's say that this is a conference room that has a larger, that is in a larger size, with an interpreter present, maybe in the back in the booth, or maybe in the front doing consecutive. Please use the microphone, or the interpreter cannot hear shit. Please. It's really conference etiquette. And I just said the word shit, didn't I? <laughs> that was also a breach of etiquette. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, TM.